Uh, fortunately, you can have both. There is a really nice power toy that you can download for Windows called Command Prompt Here that you can right click on a folder and open up a command prompt on that folder and do stuff if you want. This is a, one of the th power toys from Microsoft. It's free. And if you are, would prefer to use Bash on your Windows machine, then you can get SIGWIN, and part of SIGWIN is Bash here, which opens up a Bash shell at the current folder that you're in. It's also kind of nice. There's all this, also this really cool thing in both the Windows and the Mac world called Command Prompt Explorer Bar. This is also a free little utility. It's not for Microsoft. Somebody actually wrote it. It's a free utility that embeds a command prompt directly inside Windows Explorer. So it looks like this. When you hit the hotkey, it opens it up, and now you have a command prompt inside Explorer. And as you navigate in Explorer, it'll keep the command prompt in sync on the same directory for you. That's really nice. Now, if you change manually in the command prompt, it won't automatically change the Explorer view. But as soon as you navigate in Explorer, it'll bring you back to uh, back in sync. So if I go back to Explorer and click on source, it brings me back to that directory. And then a hotkey just makes it go away and then bring it back. So this gives you the best of both worlds. You can have the graphical explorer to see the relationship and all that stuff, and then very quickly create a command prompt on that directory and do extra stuff if you want. That's the one for um, Windows. There's also one for the Mac called Pathfinder that basically does the same thing. There's a drawer that opens up in whatever folder you're in that gives you access to a terminal. Okay, I have a question for you. How many of you in this room have written an application for heads down data entry personnel at some point in your career? Surely somebody here has written that kind of application. Okay, what's their number one request for usability of that application? Anybody? You all are too shy. Even more fundamental than shortcuts. Even more fundamental than correct tab order, although that's a big deal too. No rodents. Don't make me use the mouse for anything. Why do data entry personnel hate mice so much? Because it slows them down. Anytime they have to take their hands off the keyboard, it slows them down and they get paid for the amount of stuff they can cram into a computer. I have news for you. As developers, we are basically specialized data entry personnel. The difference is it falls out of our head onto the screen instead of coming from a fax or a purchase order or something like that. But the faster we can get stuff into the computer, the more efficient we are, which is just a long way of saying when coding, always prefer the keyboard to the mouse. Every time you take your hands off the keyboard, you're hurting your productivity. Now, it's really easy for me to say that, but uh, how many people here use Eclipse as their IDE in the Java world? How many people use IntelliJ? NetBeans? What's left? What, what's other? VI, Outlook for Java development? Okay, you should just leave now because it's nothing I'm going to say is going to help anything about uh, Outbreak. Uh, Outbreak is a really good virus distribution program with a limited email functionality. Um, so it's really easy for me to say, oh, you should always learn shortcuts, but it's hard. Have you ever opened up the uh, keyboard shortcut help file in Eclipse? It's like pages and pages and pages long, and it's full of a lot of really useful stuff like to move the cursor one character to the right, use the right arrow key. Like, wow, I never would have figured that out. My life just got a lot better. But hidden inside all of that stuff are some really useful things. So how can you force yourself to learn keyboard shortcuts? There are several ways to do this. One of them is to make yourself use the shortcut even if you've gotten there another way. So if, there, if you pick a menu and it has a keyboard shortcut on it, dismiss the menu and use the keyboard shortcut because that gives you a nice in-context way of doing that. You can also have something or someone pester you about it. One of my colleagues, a guy named Jeff Bay, and he's an Eclipse expert. And anytime you sit down to pair a program with him, if you ever do anything with a mouse that can be done with a keyboard, he forces you to undo it and then redo it with the keyboard shortcut three times in succession, which is annoying, 
but you learn really fast. There's a great little thing that I'm using on our current project. It's a Mac thing called Keycaster that actually shows on the screen what keys are being typed as they're being typed, which is really nice if you're pair programming because inevitably your pair will do something really cool and it's like, hey, how did you do that? You don't have to ask them that anymore because you can just look and see what keys they actually press to get, make that magic happen. There's a great plugin for IntelliJ called Key Prompter, and there's one, uh, the similar one for Eclipse called Mouse Feed. Both of these are free, and I want to show you what this does. This is a really handy thing to have around. Because what Key Prompter does is if you ever use something that has a keyboard shortcut, but you don't use the keyboard shortcut to do it, it reminds you of what the keyboard shortcut you could have used is, and it tells you how many times you've done it wrong. So this is what it looks like. If I'm in IntelliJ and I do something like rename, it'll say, you should have used Shift F6 and you've done it wrong one time. This is a great combination of, of encouragement and punishment because it, it says you could have done it this way and you loser, you've done it wrong this many times now. And if it ever gets to double digits, you feel awful. It gets even better than that, though, because if you're in IntelliJ and you use a menu item that doesn't actually have a keyboard shortcut, the third time you do it, it'll say, look, you're making me hurt. Let's go together and make a keyboard shortcut for that because you obviously love that so much. <laughs> now, the one for the Eclipse works basically the same way. It's a pop-up box. It shows you what, the, key, what the, the keyboard shortcut is. But Mouse Feed for Eclipse has one extra setting that I really like. It makes the menus no longer work. <laughs> so you can't cheat. The menus have basically now just become a really elaborate documentation system for keyboard shortcuts. Because they don't work anymore. You have to use the keyboard shortcut to actually get it to work. So I really like that because you will be forced to learn keyboard shortcuts really fast uh, if that's the case. So how do you learn keyboard shortcuts even when you find a new cool one? One of the things you can do is very quietly repeat it to yourself. Now, the only problem with that is your coworkers will start thinking you're an insane person. That's okay because you'll be able to, to uh, be more, way more productive than they are. But saying it out loud, even if it's very soft, pushes it into different parts of your brain and you're more likely to remember it later because remembering things is really about creating lots of neurons to the thing that you're trying to remember. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to actually create flashcards. And there is a companion wiki for the Productive Programmer book at ProductiveProgrammer.com. And on that wiki, there are flashcards for both Eclipse and IntelliJ so that you can torture your coworkers over lunch with flashcards to see how many keyboard shortcuts they actually know. But I'm going to show you a bunch of these magical hidden keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to show them to you in IntelliJ, which is my favorite environment, but these exact same keyboard shortcuts exist in Eclipse, and I'm going to show you what those, uh, what those key combinations are as well. One of my observations in the book is that all of our hierarchies are now too deep to be useful. What worked really well for 20 megabyte hard drives fails with 200 gigabyte or one terabyte hard drives. And even things like package structure in Java because the package structure has to, to uh, mimic the directory hierarchy, these things are way too deep. And anytime you find yourself opening trees to go get something, you're probably wasting time. Especially if you know the name of the thing you want, this is another exercise in showing the computer how good your hand-eye coordination is to go find the thing that you already know the name of, you just have to go visually find it in the haystack. So this is a really nice keyboard shortcut, go to class, that basically lets you, if you know the name of the thing you want, typing the name, and it'll figure out the rest of it for you. And this is only within the current project, and there's one keyboard shortcut for Java sources and another for non-Java sources, but you basically hit the keyboard shortcut, which is control N, start typing the name of a class, and you can directly go to that class really quickly. But it turns out this is the long, complicated way of doing this because both the IntelliJ and the Eclipse one also supports this idea of using the pattern of capital letters that show up in the name. You don't have to type the whole class name, you just have to put the pattern of capital letters that exist. So if I wanted that class, I can go in and just type capital SCM and it'll find shopping cart memento 